we're back and we're moving into our first conversation for this morning and uh, we are joined by attorney of law Richard Dickey Bradley. Oh, yeah, can I get this one? <laughs> Which one? Richard or Dickey? My son near Richard Bradley. Okay. Good. Good morning. Good morning, Marlene. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's a strange morning. The sea is as calm as it could be. Mm -hmm. It rained a little last night. And this morning? And towards morning. I think that is a sign from the heaven. Cool it down. <laughs> if you pee, then go on like everybody for 10 grams and hype. <laughs> and also to wash off a bit of the dust. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we are going to try to clear through uh, some of what happened yesterday and rely on your legal expertise to guide us through. Um, but of course, we wanted to provide an update uh, to our viewers um, just exactly what happened yesterday. And we're going to start uh, in the proper sequence. So we're going to start off uh, with uh, Attorney General Mike Perfit um, giving an update to the media at midday. And this is where he clearly explains uh, what was before the court to be decided. There are two applications. One is the notice of motion for expedited appeal. And the other one is the notice of appeal for the injunction itself. The Court of Appeal must first decide if they will even hear us on our disagreement with the Chief Justice that he should have granted the injunction. The Chief Justice granted the injunction, remember, and we want the Court of Appeal to hear the merits of that issue only and hopefully reverse it in our favor. However, the Court of Appeal has to decide first and foremost whether or not they can even hear it based on the rules of procedure under the Court of Appeal. The, the other side has put forward the argument that you cannot, under any circumstances, hear an appeal within 21 days after a judgment has been passed. Our position is that since the, the rules are silent, on when you can bring an expedited appeal that the Court of Appeal should use its inherent jurisdiction to grant an expedited appeal and hear the matter today. That was our argument. There has always been that concern that the government would meet the deadline for Wednesday, but you cannot rush court time. It, it takes how long, how it takes. I mean, it takes as long as it will take. Uh, we believe that it's been going very efficiently so far and it will continue to do so. And I don't think that the Court of Appeal will be too minded to go as long as they can, given the, the circumstances of the case. So I wouldn't be surprised if we go for a certain period of time and if necessary go beyond that and late if we have to. I don't doubt that the Court of Appeal would want to do that and finish. I hope that whenever they decide, they can decide very quickly so we can know what, if any, steps we need to take. So there you're here. Uh, this is the Attorney General setting the background uh, for the applications before the court. And it's important for us to distinguish um, why these applications had to be made. Uh, Rick, uh, Dickie, you were just telling <coughs> us about um, that there's a mandatory time period uh, that one has to wait before they go to the appeal. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Well, what has transpired for your viewers is that an earth shattering, if I could court bench, Honorable Prime Minister of Belize. An earth-shattering event occurred last week, Wednesday, in which, to the surprise of literally everyone in the country, the Chief Justice of Belize, the Honorable Kenneth Benjamin, who has immediately been catapulted into the history of the country with a decision that I don't think, like, from the Battle of St. George's Key onward, there has ever been anything of this nature in which the whole country up and cock is just like just ready to pull the trigger. Everybody just, the Chief Justice handed down a decision that he is ordering that the referendum is not to take place on the 10th of April because based on preliminary, well, it's not preliminary, but because of an application for an injunction there is, your viewers need to be reminded, a substantive application. They call it a claim and they call the persons claimants. There is an application to the Supreme Court of Belize that, guess what? From the get-go, the signing of the special agreement all the way down to 
holding a referendum, that is, I want to be a word, Kevin, you, you, you read a lot of literature. That is infested with illegality. Every, every step of the way since they have done something illegal. Um, it's also important to note that that application to have a full trial on the matter came along with an application because of the closeness to which the referendum was scheduled that the lawyers, and I, I want to remember their name and give everybody credit, the lawyers are also, had also asked the Supreme Court to kindly grant an injunction to stay, don't hold the referendum until the court can hear the substantive arguments as to whether or not there is illegality and violation of the Constitution. Lo and behold, the Chief Justice did that. He did it on one issue. The application for the injunction, which follows the major claim, the application, is saying, look, we need an order from the Supreme Court to say to the Prime Minister, do not request the Governor General to issue a writ of holding the referendum. Under the Referendum Act, one certain information is given to the Governor General. By the way, he has no power. He has to do what the government advises him. Once that information is given, the Governor General signs a writ. In this case, he signed 31 writ to the returning officers of each electoral division to start preparing to hold a referendum on the 10th. The other side, the government lawyers wanting to show the Chief Justice, listen, I even better go there, you know, because the Prime Minister in January already notified the GG to go ahead and give the writ. And the GG issued the legal, lawfully required writ under the referendum. Mm -hmm. He already, he already um, issued that writ, he already made that thing. Yeah. They attached it to show proof that what they're saying is so. And when Amon Courtney and the other attorneys said, oh my goodness, this, this, I mean, hey man, let me wash my face in cold water. This can't be happening. The writ is also illegal and unlawful and in violation of the laws of Belize. The Governor General is saying that under Section 21A of the Referendum Act, he has been advised or satisfied that mm -hmm. this that will happen. 21D? No, D is the one about, there are two, there are four grounds under which in the referendum law, I, mm -hmm. I think I brought it so Kevin could um, apply his legal expertise. There are four grounds under which a uh, referendum can be held. I don't yeah. know where's the camera, but there is 2-1-A, mm -hmm. B, C, and D. A is that the National Assembly, mm -hmm. by the way, I think you all no, have this up is there. The, this, this is, is the, the previous one. act, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was amended in 2008. Kevin is familiar because the amendment was challenged. Yeah. This is a huge thing that was never discussed. In any event, 2-1-A is saying that the National Assembly must meet and a debate on the issue that there is something of national importance that requires a referendum. Mm -hmm. That is one. The other two, and then the fourth mm -hmm. one, is, as we had mentioned briefly when you invited me last week, that there is to be a referendum by law on any proposed settlement with Guatemala for resolving the Belize-Guatemala border dispute. Mm -hmm. Now the GG is saying, under 2-1-A, the National Assembly has never met, hold no debate or discussion on the issue, and made no resolution and nothing, mm -hmm. nothing. How could you go to show the Chief Justice, listen, under this we done, referendum done has been ordered, we done, they prepare all kind of, excuse me. I mean, you know, let me pause and say this, because I actually, on my way here, when I saw the sea, I get my inspiration from the sea, you know why and so on. You know, the mighty hand of God is moving through the land. You know, Anthony Sylvester, the party leader, asked him to speak to the followers who were all gathering over this matter. And Anthony said that. I can't tell you anything other than to start by, there must be divine intervention in what transpired. So many errors have been made from the get-go. Yeah. So Kevin and Marlene and your viewers, 
this first section of the referendum act there is no national assembly meeting there was no resolution mm -hmm. they argue that it couldn't be the one you just mentioned d because that involves a proposal that will end the dispute for which the people of belize have a right under the law yeah. to go to a referendum it couldn't be this because there's no the icj is not a some it's it's I'm not a final not, tongue yeah. all right um so that is so what that what so what on that basis justice. the chief justice yeah. says just on the basis of that, mm -hmm. there is an arguable case to come to the court that some illegality occurred. What will happen is he looks at the balance of what will happen. If we hold the referendum and hold the substantive case after that, the referendum could very well be legal and has to be held all over. So, so take us to what happened yesterday. Okay, so that major earth shattering, unbelievable occurrence occurred mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the chief justice of the country when that happened the government said we will ask the chief justice we'll make an application for him to vary his decision that referendum has to be put on pause have to have to be put on we will ask him to say you can go ahead and hold a referendum, but the results of the referendum is not going to be formalized, certified, certified is, is the word. Mm -hmm. Meaning they're not put out the, the results of it, it's not lawful and, well, it's not been confirmed that that is the result of the referendum. Yeah. And as you would know, Eamon Courtney, brilliant attorney that he is, publicly said, well, let me see, let me see what kind of draft order you all will ask us to agree to, to, I want to see that. The government abandoned that and instead took their cue from the Prime Minister's press conference of last week where he said the court man, hear this matter from Monday and give one decision Tuesday so I could have my referendum on Wednesday. They applied to the Court of Appeal, which is the next highest court mm -hmm. after the Supreme Court in terms of the hierarchy of the courts. They applied to ask the court as an urgent application to, in fact, review the Chief Justice's decision to grant an injunction mm -hmm. and, in effect, to discharge that injunction to say that that can't hold up, that can't stand. So that's the two applications that the Attorney General that just is, explained. That is one, because the other one would be to hear the to hear appeal yeah. itself. That is just, um, yeah. So that is what went to our Court of Appeal mm -hmm. on Friday, in which the Court of Appeal held an emergency case management mm -hmm. and said to the attorneys from the two sides, file in your papers by 6 o'clock on Saturday. File in your papers. There was some discussion, we would call it argument, so some back and forth in relation to can the Court of Appeal sit on the Lord's Day. The law is the Court of Appeal is not to sit on Sunday. It's a Christian country. I imagine they got that from way back. Six days shall thou labor and do all that thou hast to do, but on the seventh day we remember the Creator and even He rested. So on Sunday, the Court of Appeal, not on that basis, that is Bible. They rested because the law says you can't on a Sunday. So Monday, the government, I guess that is where you get the um, interview from the Attorney General. His ministry messed up big time, big, big time. It's an unfortunate situation to single out the Chief Elections Officer, which the Prime Minister did. Prime Ministers are not to do that, you know. They're not to attack public officers. They're not to throw them under the bus. They are worse not to say what he's saying about the court and the judges and the chief justice. That's not how it goes. If a prime minister is unhappy with a decision, he tells his legal people to appeal it. Yeah. Don't make that kind of statement. So, so that is what transpired. So now in the court on, on Monday, yeah. they go in with these lengthy arguments, mm -hmm. which I want to say to you, I, the writing, the drafting, looks like Radwell Williams. And I would say this, that when I read it Saturday night or Sunday night, I, I, f I found some very interesting matters that needs to be aired at another time. But okay. he put forward some excellent points to say that this argument about 2-1-A and the argument about 2-1-D, 
that the writ, the Governor General's writ, is the cause of the problem. Mm -hmm. It is an unlawful writ. He has no authority to issue any such writ under the law because it doesn't fall under 2 a and it doesn't fall under 2 d according to Amon and his team. And he has, he has put forward some interesting arguments. Um, but for the purposes of answering your question, they file their papers Saturday evening. Mm -hmm. They come to court Monday morning. Amon and his team does the response. Now, Sunday I'm reading because then the day was a crazy day. The wind was howling out of the sea. The, when you cross the, um, the entrance in the harbor, I mean, it was really. So point is. So the, the primary argument yesterday was to get the Court of Appeal, and correct me if I'm wrong, to agree to hear the case first on, on lifting the injunction. Yeah. Okay. And that was... And to be followed by the hearing other the other arguments. Okay. The expedited case. So I was just asking, the law mandates that you must wait 21 days before you file the appeal, right? Yes. So, so under what grounds, since you've read the, the arguments put forward... Well, would, yeah. yes, sorry, I'm kidding. Be before you hear it. Before you hear it. Okay. Um, but uh, as I understand it... Um, there, in, in this case, not to get too technical, yeah. that there is a way in which, because you can file an appeal immediately, right? Mr. Mr. Yes, Brandy? you can. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the law has certain restrictions as to when it can be heard. Yeah. <coughs> and so you have to wait 21 days. If you don't want to wait 21 days, mm -hmm. there is a way in which yes. you can go to the court and ask the court, please, give me permission to do it quicker. And that was the application that was denied yesterday. Is that accurate? That is correct. Yeah. Now, which brings me to my other question, which is, is this, again, sort of not a, a real victory for the, for the claimants in the, at, at the Supreme Court? Because it's not a hearing on the substance either. Mm -hmm. We're still kind of wrapped up and spinning around in procedure. Because as I understand it, one of the arguments in court was that section 17, one, one section in the law, doesn't allow for this to happen. And from the interview from Mr. Courtney, it appears that they applied under the wrong section. So are we still arguing procedure and not gotten to substance yet? Except that, I, you know, it's a, for me, like, because I come from Wagnerlin, like, argue too much procedure and then too much law. Is, we have to think about the viewers. I want to keep that the viewers understand what has happened. Yes. The government rushes over to the Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. And as you say, the law would allow. You can file in your papers any time, you know, right mm -hmm. away. <laughs> as the Chief Justice says, injunction you the cross there, mm -hmm. you don't go have it prepared. But the law. The law, you describe it quite because you say the procedure, but the procedure is also the law. In fact, the procedure that got the government in this pickle is the writ that the Governor General signed. It's only a procedural matter to tell the elections machinery to kick in, but that is the law you have but to, you have so to. But the real question as to whether yes. or not the Bayesian people should Would be allowed to vote in a referendum tomorrow that has not been decided as yet? Uh, not, not, not before the Chief Justice? The substantive the case, case, yeah, but the substantive case... We don't call it case, substantive, remember you said that it's we're not important going to confuse... For, yeah, that's why, that's why we don't want to confuse it happened. Yes. I apply. All right, let me quick get this. Let me, get, let, let me try to go through this one more time. <laughs> the People's United Party, six persons on behalf of that organization, which is a constitutional creature created by the Constitution. Mm -hmm. There shall be a leader of the opposition. The deputy leader, the Honorable Cordell Hyde, is one of the persons who sign this application to the Supreme Court. The three giants from Dong South. These are the people that cause this whole thing, you know. Honorable Rodwell Ferguson, Honorable, Honorable Michael Espat, and the Honorable Oscar Kenya are from Dong South. You recall the Malakate Declaration where they met in August of last year to disagree with their party? We are saying no, while the party had not been clear what they want. 
with six applicants, Anthony Mahler, who will be a future A representative, and Julius Espat, makes an application that there is illegality and violation of the Constitution for these many reasons, more than a dozen reasons. Mm -hmm. An injunction is asked for because at the filing on, on, on case, by the time it goes through the regular hearing procedure, the referendum, referendum would, would have, have been, been held. held. And if you hold it, yeah. And then find and the that referendum is triggered by the special agreement. It's set out in the special that agreement. Is so most if you're Marlene, that is most important, Marlene. That is most important. That's part of the reason why the pause was held. If yes. I if I understand that what you're saying right, and and so the injunction was granted under the discrepancies uh, that existed within the writ of referendum. Um, in and the I writ think, itself. Yeah, from the governor general. And I think what Kevin is saying is that. It isn't really so a matter where we have, or the courts have heard, the arguments against the, le the legality Substantive. of the special agreement. Yes. It was just that we will get to that, but let's pause. And then that injunction, the pause button, yes. was taken to the Court of Appeal, argued that it should be heard on this day very quickly, and that was denied. Excellently put. I is that what I understand? Yes. Okay, so... Uh, with this exception, though, okay. that you ask for an injunction, the court does not grant an injunction lightly mm -hmm. because when you are giving an injunction, if you are building your house and part of it is on Kevin's land, he is asking the court to stop you from building because if you wait until you clear up who owns the land, who gets it lawfully, who holds the correct title, the building would have been completed, and then what will happen? You will tell me, I can't get back my 80 feet of land because one house left on it, mm -hmm. but I will then pay you money for losing your land. And the judge, the judge is saying, no, man, listen, this matter is so serious, I can't let you go ahead and build, stop build. You are then to say to the other much? party, if I lose my case, I have to pay you for stop all the, all the costs of stopping your construction. How much, and, and can you, uh, I'd like a little bit of clarification. How much does the granting of an injunction legitimize the claim that has been brought forward in the Supreme Court? Well, it says that the judge, the chief justice of this country, the Honorable Kenneth Benjamin, is saying, I am satisfied that there is legal arguments that deserve to be heard and to allow the proceed to proceed with holding the referendum is not the proper thing to do in the circumstances. Okay. There are lots of arguments that Radwell and the legal team for going put forward to the Court of Appeal. That is wrong. The Chief Justice didn't even ask for them to put up damages. You know you have to say well. In the event you stop the referendum and it turns out that it was not stopped correctly, you want to pay for all the election, all the training, all the what the, the Chief Justice didn't ask. This is a serious constitutional matter. Sorry, sorry. You're saying that in the The Chief Justice did not, in granting the injunction, did not require from the People's United Party to give an undertaking to say that you will meet the damages caused by my stopping the injunction at your request. Isn't that because in constitutional matters there's no requirement for cause Well, you and, and I damages? would say that, but the big issue is made out of that, no? So I want to move forward sure. because we, we have a lot more to unpack oh, my as well. Goodness, a lot e more? Yes. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to get to is uh, looking at when the decision was made at the end of the day. Um, and so we have a senior counsel, uh, Eamon Courtney, addressing the media, explaining uh, what the court had ruled. Right. So let's listen to that now. Just a short while ago, the Court of Appeal announced that it had reached a decision that it does not have jurisdiction to entertain the appeal that the um, Prime Minister and others wanted to present to the Court of Appeal. And therefore, they refused the application for an urgent hearing of the appeal. So what happens now? What is the next step if they decide, as, as the AG has said, that they are thinking the CCJ? Well, if they are thinking the CCJ, the procedure is laid out. Um, they would have to get special leave from the CCJ and the CCJ would probably deal with that as the hearing of the appeal. Um, there is a logistical problem. I mean, it's 24 hours basically. So, I mean, the court, the CCJ has met in urgent sessions like this before, but um, 
I think it's really for the government to decide what they're going to do. So what do you make of the, the court's um, ruling and the reasoning? Well, I think the law was on the side of the respondents. Um, we referred to cases that had already been considered by this court, that are decisions that have been made by this court. I think uh, Mr. Williams uh, attempted to try to get around the cases that had already been decided by this court. Um, insofar as this is concerned, what it says is that when you want to make an urgent application to the Court of Appeal, you must come by another way. And it is not for me to advise them on what the proper procedure could have been, but clearly they chose the wrong route. Senior Congress, do you think there is any way in hell that we will get to this referendum on Wednesday? Just looking at the logistics, looking at the time frame. <laughs> well, I mean, as you heard, one of the issues was that the Chief Elections Officer had told her officers to proceed notwithstanding. I would hope that good sense would prevail and she would now issue an email and say, listen, then come with our left hook, then give me an uppercut, make me chill, because after this, I mean, the CCJ will then just knock them out cold. Um, as I said, we relied on decided cases. I think the law in this era is clear. Um, I think my learned friends were well aware that they had a very difficult case. And in a matter like this, for the CCJ to take it up on an urgent basis and to hear it, it would have to be clear to them that the Court of Appeal has made a mistake and therefore they will grab it and correct it in time. My sense is that the government would not be able to show the CCJ at this stage overnight that there is such a glaring error by the Court of Appeal that they CCJ has to grab it in order for the referendum to be held. And I think it is important that the Belizean people know that there is sworn evidence before the court that the government issued a press release. The Honorable Attorney General also stated that the referendum can be delayed. So mature reflection is what is required. There is no point paying more legal fees. There is no point going to the CCJ over this. The point of the matter is that they came by the wrong route, and I think that we must just accept that. And like the party leader said, hit the pause button. So there we heard uh, Senior Counsel Eamon Courtney representing the claimants, in this case, uh, PUP representatives and an as aspirant as well, uh, speaking of what the court decided. Now, to give you an understanding of just how rapidly things were happening, that interview uh, with Senior Counsel was perhaps around uh, 5 in the evening, a little bit after, and by 5.30. Uh, the Prime Minister had prepared to address uh, the media or the public in general, and uh, here is what he had to say. We will not be having a referendum on Wednesday, April the 10th. I am in no doubt that we will be having a referendum on going to the ICJ. Uh, no later than six to eight weeks from the originally scheduled date. I want to be clear about a number of things. Um, again, I've tried to keep my campaign for a yes vote above partisan politics. But I must say that all this is part of the opposition's delay tactics, and to my mind, amount to an effort to stymie Belizean democracy, to deprive the people of this country of their right to choose. But let's, first of all, understand what happened today. It is not that the Chief Justices injunction was upheld. It is that the court found that they could not hear our appeal against that injunction until 21 days would have expired from the filing of the grounds of appeal. We knew of the section in the Court of Appeal Act that so stated 
but we thought that we could persuade the court to get round what appeared to be an absolute prohibition. We did not succeed, so it meant that, in effect, the appeal against Chief Justice Benjamin's issuing of the injunction was not heard. So there we had the outline of what the court ruled and uh, the Prime Minister addressing um, the public in explaining what, would ha what um, his interpretation was. Uh, and it was very I'm, clear, and that's why I was asking about the two applications earlier. There seems to be a very clear difference that's trying to be drawn here about the fact that it was not heard versus upholding the injunction. Well, Kevin is correct in that the substantive argument, the actual case, mm -hmm. Listen to my argument. This is what Colonel Hyde and the others are saying, Honorable Colonel Hyde are saying. Hear this argument that the special agreement is infested with illegality and everything that flows out of an illegality is also illegal. It's the, in another Fruit context. Fruit of the poison tree. Fruit mm -hmm. of the poison tree. That we like to say to judges when we are making a particular type of submission. Um, but the request for the injunction is an integral part of the law. Why will I come to you? As the government was complaining and as the prime minister complained at his press conference bitterly, he even used the word which was in the arguments put forward by, by Rodwell Williams and Lisa, lashes from, I didn't look up the etymology of the word to see where it came from or so, but meaning you have a right, you did have a right, to come to the court to challenge these matters, but you wait till no man, you wait till I've done build my house, I just to put on a little touch of the paint from the last leaf, and now you can holler, I built my your yard, and now you can holler that. That is an argument they wanted to put forward and feel like they had grounds for that. That you come, you should have come earlier at the, at the initial case management situation for the, for the, um, the preliminary, application for the matter when the Chief Justice says, well, all right, we will do this within certain time. You will have two hours to make your argument. You will have to move on. You file by a certain time and so. The Chief Justice also express, expressed a bit of concern that at the 11th hour, so Amon was explaining to the judge and by extension making an argument. It is late, but it is never too late to come to the court on a matter. Guess what happened? If the government had had its way and the referendum is held tomorrow, and when the Chief Justice hears the matter, it is an illegal referendum. You know the way, that, uh, that will be the real waste of money, because then you actually have the equivalent of an election. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of political uh, um, speculation as to why the, the, the Prime Minister is so adamant that I have to have the tent, and apart from hubris and arrogance and so on, and when he says something, it has to happen. The point is that the Chief Justice gave the injunction because he was satisfied as the trial judge. Can I, that there was an illegal can, can, can aspect. I ask this, um, can I ask this, key in terms of listening to the, to the Prime Minister, um, Despite the fact that at yesterday's press conference at 5.30, when you contrast that with his position before the court had he been was. heard, yes, and he was saying that the court will do this, and he was very definitive and very sure that he would have gotten, it appeared, some relief from the Court of Appeal, and he was, the case didn't go as I would assume that he had planned in the Court of Appeal. But it appears that he still went back to his critique of the Chief Justice. Yeah, as opposed to, I mean, I would think he would follow that, okay, one judge didn't do it right, according to the Prime Minister. Now your angst will be turned to the Court of Appeal. But he, he didn't seem to have that same angst against the Court of Appeal. No, because no, that, is, no, that is 100% their fault. They totally fell down in making a motion for an expedited hearing, calling and the Court of Appeal to hurry here this matter That's when the rules of the Court of so Appeal is very clear. There yeah. has to be 21 days. So you have to serve the thing seven days after giving but the original But if what I understand, notice. Senior Counsel, what is saying properly is that there was a way 
to have had the case heard yes, expeditiously. Yes, but he's not going to help them and tell them. You don't tell your So on, under what section did they we apply will, and we what will were not, the other? We will not go there for them. Just like I wanted to say something on the last occasion and I, I held back. I, I maybe shouldn't even say it now, but you are saying it in a different context. So the prime minister has abandoned trying to force you to the court. He abandoned that. That's what he did yesterday. The way he abandoned last week, wanting the Chief Justice to vary his injunction to say, still hold your referendum, but don't say... He abandoned that. No, he, he abandoned I, what? I'm, I'm he not... abandoned having lost in the court on the first occasion in front of the Chief Justice that the Chief Justice says, I am granting an injunction. There is matters to be tried, a full hearing. And I'm satisfied that we have to put a pause on the referendum. No referendum until we argue these illegalities on the face of the, of the submission. Prime Minister is saying, well, I still have my referendum. You know, I'm going to tell the Chief Justice, just bear it for me. Hold a referendum, everybody come out and vote. But we now have, we now know what the final decision of the vote until you but hear But these are all process. legitimate legal processes. Of course they are, but he abandoned it. That is also a legitimate observation. Having abandoned it, he's saying, as Kevin is pointing out to you, we are going to the court. And on Monday, you hear the matter, and Tuesday, you give a decision. Well, the court gave him one right on Monday. Yeah. And the next step would then be, if they're to progress with taking it through the court system, going to the Caribbean Court of Justice. Now, I just want to quickly get in that clip where he explains the possibility for this, and uh, then we can discuss it a bit after uh, it airs. Let us hear so it, it in it here, though, because I don't know what he's... Let it, can we hear it in here? Yes. In other words, we must at least examine the possibility of, hi of having the highest court of our country look at the Chief Justice's decision, which after examining, never had a chance to do it when we spoke last, and after taking advice from various luminaries throughout the Caribbean, I am entirely convinced I shall go to my grave secure in the knowledge that the Chief Justice got it horribly wrong. But we therefore will huddle with counsel a little later this, this evening to see if we can go get before the CCJ to in fact have a hearing of the substantive appeal against the Chief Justice's injunction. So there we had the clip with the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. um, explaining certain things. Now, one of, the, one, of the, one of the concerns, it appears that the Prime Minister, as I say, it appears that he went back to his critique of the, of the Chief okay. Justice. Um, and one of his complaints appeared to be that the Chief Justice had overreached in the way that he worded the injunction. And now this seems to be important because it appears, as we have a clip with um, the Prime Minister explaining why he found that the wording of injunction was too much, is that it appears that the Chief Justice hinged any continuation on the full hearing being heard, which is important because it stops the government from going to the House and fixing some of the errors no, it didn't. Well, that, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating, oh, I'm sorry. trying to paraphrase oh, oh, okay, okay. the strategic difficulty okay. that the yeah. Prime Minister seemed to be having. Yeah. And we've seen this before in terms of the um, acquisition of BTL. We've seen this in the Alberto Vils case, which in, right before the CCG had heard, the, 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 the Parliament made certain changes. So it appears that the Prime Minister is saying, listen, we are in this mess, this parliamentary mess, this political mess, because the Chief Justice phrased his injunction in such a way to prevent us to even fix it politically. How do you comment on no, that? No, that, that would be stretching what the Chief Justice has ordered a little too far. There was nothing. They made a strategic blunder mm. in figuring by using the bully pulpit 
and insisting that there has to be a hearing of the matter on Monday and a decision by Tuesday so they could proceed on Wednesday, putting all their eggs in that basket and were blown out of the water completely. When you, if you go back over that, you're looking at a man who is dejected and defeated. And uh, it's, it's, it's amazing that he never just go off the way he cuts up a judge in the Supreme Court just some, some weeks ago. No man. To go over for your viewers, because we get entangled in the, legal, in the legalities, the Chief Justice of Belize, the new hero of this nation, says that information has come to him by the arguments in court, and it comes from the other side, the government, that they issued a writ, that they, uh, they, they make the poor governor general look bad to have signed something which is unlawful, which is not in accordance with the referendum law. When, and seeing that, the Chief Justice says, I am satisfied that there is an illegality, that there's a possibility that there is illegality, to the extent that we ought not to go to a referendum because then you would have allowed the person to completely build a house where mm -hmm. they probably end up have to go and build all back over. The referendum would have to be held all over. So I'm saying I'm granting the injunction. And that is the legal procedure in terms of the injunction stays whatever it is the other side is complaining about don't have the injunction now because everything has been infested with HIV, with cancer, the whole patient is, 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 is infected. So he said that. Now, what I thought would have happened is that the Prime Minister and his majority in the House on Monday or I don't want to say it well, because next thing is going to happen, the Prime Minister could have gone to the House and amended we'll the referendum up. And I think that is the uh, point that Kevin writ, is making. So writ, let's, yeah. let's, let's take the opportunity. If we hear what he said, because he was asked this very same question, why didn't he go to the House and quote-unquote fix the law, right? So let's, let's hear what he said at yesterday's press conference. Well, the short answer to that is that even if we were to fix the law, which we will, in any event, ultimately do, that does not lift the injunction. The Chief Justice, and I also think this is one of his errors, described his order in the widest possible terms. He said that all of us, and in particular the Chief Elections Officer, all of us are restrained from holding the injunction until after he would have tried the entire case. Number of things about that. With no disrespect to the Chief Justice, he's not exactly known for uh, timely, fast hearings and quick delivery of decisions. So, if we were to simply rest content with that order as it is currently framed, there is no telling when on earth we would ever be able to have the referendum. And I repeat, this government is determined and will absolutely find a way to have that injunction held uh, within the next uh, one to, to two months. We will not allow the Belizean people to be deprived of their fundamental right to decide on this issue. And, and to, I, I'm sure he meant referendum in that final yes. statement there, but that was the point I think that Kevin was making. Um, we are on the air? Yes, we are on <laughs> the air, <laughs> yes. <laughs> The Prime Minister's statement is taking up all of this morning's discussion. It reminds me of a caller to, um, I think, Moe's Hyde and Krim um, Radio TV in the morning. Have a caller we call every morning and try to kill as much time as possible so that a little bit of time left in the first Well, you see, the difference is this is the leader of our nation, and so what he yes, says carries substantial weight. Yes, and he can get himself in a mess, man. 
So go back to the issue here that, that Kevin is asking. He's saying that what is set out, what, what the CJ issued in the injunction prohibits the referendum from being held quite properly until so. Even if it's the case is heard. Is heard. Even yeah. if they go to the House and change laws. Well, the Chief Justice cannot make an order that the government cannot go to the legislature and make laws. That's not what the Chief Justice said. Then slip down, you know. Instead of one thing that he could probably intimidate the court and get there that money this one here and choose them again a decision and I, Pharaoh, will have my referendum on Wednesday the 10th, what they could have done, and I don't want to say next you know they go do it. They could have had their meeting at the house, amend the section of the Referendum Act, including that the Governor General writ shall be issued 30 days period. They could say the Governor General can issue the writ whenever he's satisfied that there is preparations that but have been taken or whatever wording that they slip down, you know. But Dickie, Dickie it, it appears if we're hearing what the Prime Minister is saying, and it, it is clear, it is clear that the Prime Minister is emotionally involved. Uh, you can see from his, his tenacity, his, his angst, his anger, that he is personally invested in this. It's part of his legacy. But if you also listen to him, he's also made some concessions. The first concession, if you listen to him, is one, that there's something that needs to be fixed, and they will fix it. That is so obvious. No? So he said that. You can fix it. Remember before you can fix it before you get I, in at this fix, Kevin. I, un I understand that. Okay. But, but we have to we have to hear everything that he's saying in in his anger and in his growling. One, he said that there's something that needs to be fixed and he will fix it. And it appears that there was something about Friday. There will be a meeting, meeting, house house meeting on to Friday. Fix it. The second thing is that he's also said that the referendum appears not to be uh, held tomorrow, but that they seem to have conceded that it cannot be held tomorrow, but that it will be held no later than two months from now. But he's saying, I can't even do that because I don't have an out from the Chief That's Justice. That's Even if I go and fix it, I still have to go back to court and ask the court to discharge the injunction after I fixed it. If it was like maybe... 8 o'clock tonight or tomorrow, I'll tell you something, and I'll tell you nothing. But that is not true. We have to come back to that at another time. That is not true. The Chief Justice's injunction is based on the illegal writ, which is in contravention of the Referendum Act. Having seen that, not the substantive argument as theirs. I, you know, by, by coincidence, I saw something either early this morning or you know they are still carrying on these ICJ because of a little technicality the CJ gave an injunction and so but we figure more or less that that will be lifted and we continue and we'll have the referendum still yet and so on. So that's, that's really borderline and contempt you know. In fact Amon raised the issue that the chief elections officer is in contempt of the chief justice's injunction because she tells the, all the officers then go ahead and prepare we'll because of so on. So, and she did put in her letter, thank goodness. Based on legal advice. That she's saying on legal advice. Civil servants want to be very careful and you know the actual rules of the civil service. If you're my minister and you instruct me to do something which I know is either wrong or I'm of the view that the rules do not allow me to do it, I am to put it in the file and say, Minister, my view and understanding is that I do not have the authority to do so and so. And the minister will write in writing that I am directing you. If you don't want to carry the directive, you pack your things and ask for a transfer and go somewhere else. So the, the, the chief elections officer was saved just by that. Because of the court, the law is, if you are in contempt of, a, of an injunction, if you aid and abet and mm -hmm. anyway try to undermine the, any court order, you can't then come to court and want to ask for me to do this and that, because you are, you, you, you are very disrespectful to the court, no? So, so what the host we'll meeting will take place on Friday. Yes, and, and we can talk about what can potentially happen there. We'll take a quick pause in this conversation, and we'll be back with more uh, from Dickie Bradley on this topic. Stay tuned.
When someone you love becomes a memory, the memory becomes a treasure. Channel 5 introduces the Daily Obituaries. The Daily Obituaries will broadcast all that and funeral announcements and memorials to honor your loved one's life and memories. The Daily Obituaries airs on Channel 5 prior to the evening newscast with subsequent repeats at 10 p.m. and 12 noon the following day. It will also be placed online on our social media platforms, all for a standard package fee. Celebrate their lives and memories with Channel 5's daily obituaries. Honor in life and reverence in death. Thank you for staying with us through the second segment. We were just heating up. We have with us Onset Dickie Bradley who's going through the events that have been unfolding nationally and internationally for Belize in relation to the holding of the referendum. Internationally? Internationally as well. In terms of and one of the things that the Prime Minister referred to in a question yesterday was um, how was this impacting our friends, mm -hmm. our international friends, and he did, he did respond to that. But, but I, I wanted to go in a little that it bit. Impacted, that it impacted them? That he has been fielding calls and there has been reactions from the international community as to what is going on. Yeah. Um, not surprisingly enough, they may, are positive. Well, of course, uh, Kevin, the special agreement, which is part of the core of the whole problem, the special agreement requires that the two parties, Guatemala and Belize, do everything in your domestic law, in, inside your country, to make sure everything's smooth to go to the ICJ, you know. And obviously Belize did not do that. Belize took a strongman approach. Eamon Courtney has made this point over and over. The leader of the opposition in this country who is always in parliamentary democracy, a future prime minister, anything could happen. Um, the leader of the opposition writes the leader of the government to ask certain questions. And we find out that, you know, have the manners, the common, courtesy of saying, your letter has been received, I have asked X or Y to look into the matter, I will be responding to you in another week or two. Not even that, my boy. These are the levels that we deal with in the country. The other thing I want to say quickly before time runs out on us, the entry into party politics of a national issue mm. like the nation searching to become good neighbors with our neighbor. We are stuck with each other for eternity. British were here, they owned us, they owned our land, they could have given it away for some reason that did not happen, the right hand of God perhaps. They are gone, we will always be here with a nation that is far bigger than us and far more populated than us. And we have to find a way. So we are searching for a solution. It becomes a party political matter. And the concern out here among the right-thinking members of our society, of whom there are many, is that that is a sad situation. We need to pause, um, Kevin and Marlene, we need to, our leaders, and I was with Johnny Bresenio and Coralie Hyde last night, uh, we need, our leaders need to pause and say, you know what, this business that, oh, all right, you beat me for an injunction, but watch when I come back, and oh, I never gave me away in the court of appeal, so this is where I'm going out of the house, I want to change the law, and I will have my thing. And, and it also is a dirty lie to say that the opposition wants to stop them from allowing the people to have their say. In fact, in humble opinion, if the people were to be called upon to vote, no, they will blow away that referendum matter because they will ask themselves, oh my goodness, you go to court and mess up like this, not once, not twice, over these matters that should be straightforward. You can't even draft a, you can't draft a writ for the Governor General, which is lawful and proper. You can't even do that. What will happen to you when you get to the ICJ? Well, the Prime How Minister, sloppy are you that you overlook all these illegalities? Well, the Prime Minister did call what was happening locally mischief by the opposition yeah, and shenanigans, which would not be tolerated. He's catering to, the, to the, the followers of the party, like, oh, they, man, they tried to do this. Like, when, that, what happened to this country in relation to the Petrocari monies? Roll it, Petrocari, roll it. The opposition wants to stop you from spending the money. I could spend the money. You see what has happened? Over four hundred million dollars has gone. The people are still poor. I know the kid still reverse, uneducated. You know, I was thinking it. I don't know what your opinion on this is. But what has happened? Even though there has been two losses for the government, 
Which never should have happened. In a row. Never should have happened. It actually is, gives credence to the fact that courts do work despite what power is saying to it. And it's actually the reverse of the point that, that you were just making. That is why I'm the Chief Justice. That be, is why I'm bringing up the Chief Justice. Because one of the arguments is that somehow the ICJ will be swayed by the fact that Belize is small and be influenced somehow. But we have seen two examples of how the court does work based on law yes. and not based on some surprise thing. But I think so doesn't this support, this, does this confirm and should embolden Belizeans to be no, less Kevin. fearful to go to the court because no, the court no, won't no, be moved no, because no, Guatemala no, is bigger no. or... America has some bigger well, state for all put, the other things we've heard. Let me put it this way. Gloria Estefan, it cut both ways. It cut both yeah. ways. Yeah, I think it, people are seeing it the from, other side. from the opposite perspective. What they're saying is that, but listen, when you go valid, to court, yeah. you can lose. Yes, that yes. That will catch the government. Yeah. What technicality? People use the word, I don't know technicality. This is no technicality. This is a chief justice issuing an order for an injunction. There's nothing technical yeah. about that. That is a part of the law. I think... What surprised me, can I say this? You had asked me, and this came out at when, you were, when I was here on the last occasion, uh -huh. releasing that Gian Gandhi bombshell. <laughs> can I <laughs> can't answer it? You know, they didn't say anything. They took that man's word and turned it around to confuse religion people. They said, we have an ironclad case. When he's saying to you, <laughs> listen, people are believing no one gambling in the country. Well, listen to this part here. When they run out of time, let me say that had the Southern Caucus, Radwell Ferguson, Oscar Ricania, and Mike Espat not get along with Julius Espat and Monche and the others to say that we have concern. See anything like in the court case? Mm -hmm. We have concern, man. Let's put an injunction from this business of yes, 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 ICG. That Cordell went down there at Malakate Beach. I think Malakate is the name of a fish say I support what you guys are doing. This started the almost a minor revolution within the People's United Party which had been confused over what to do over this matter. Now I want to tell you that I am convinced in my mind. When I left here the last time you were questioning me and bombarding me with questions, I... <laughs> As is my job. <laughs> no, I come here to be bombarded. <laughs> I have my shield and my sword. <laughs> um, I can read over certain things, you know, and this is, of course, just my opinion. It's not a legal opinion either, but the British stay behind this big time. That's why we read in this mess here. Guatemala has said, because they know, because they have legal advice to this matter, that Guatemala has a strong claim against the British for what happened with the 1859 Treaty, specifically Article 7. You read all the legal opinions. That part comes out clear. Guatemala, you have a weak case against Belize, but you have a strong case against them. Belize never signed no treaty. Belize never broke no treaty. Go and deal with them. But guess what? The Guatemalans are smart and <coughs> getting some advice right now. Then they come to me first because there's a likelihood they could get peace of land, they could get lot of sea, they could keep the river that they have already taken. They have taken our river, you know. What a disgrace that our two leaders can say that. Now listen to this. Guatemala is wrong in thinking that when they finish it, Belize, if they get anything, they then go into Britain. Because Britain can't get any land. Britain has to pay their money. Mm -hmm. But you can't take the same issue to court. Two you times. can't go to, to England you. if, if so, you settle with Belize. But let me, I want to bring it back to, because even before we the get British to the ICJ the and first. all these <laughs> hypotheticals, we have to get to the ICJ, which means you have to get a yes vote at a referendum that can't seem to happen as yet, where the current uh, timeline is 68 weeks and i want to ask you uh we hear of a house meeting on friday to fix the laws what 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 are some of the per, uh the probable outcomes of what would take place on friday they would have to change what the referendum act yes yes i think when you look at the argument submitted by radwell williams the legal arguments to refute some of what the Chief Justice's base his decision on the writ was unlawful and illegal and creates a case that is triable, a triable case. You can see some defects in the referendum law. I think you had raised it the last time I was here that the Section 2.1D 
which is what is in the Governor General's writ, that a proposed settlement is before the people of Belize and therefore it triggers a referendum. Oh. Rodwell has made some legal arguments to say that that fits in with what the compromise is trying to achieve. The compromise is trying to achieve a settlement. Um, he quotes two, section two, subsection one D, which is the one that says mm -hmm. that where there's a proposed settlement with Guatemala, we must have a referendum under the law. I had said to you when I was here, this section was thrown out of the this window. This is what is in the writ. This is a copy of one of yes, the Yes, that yeah. is a Thank you for clearing yeah. that up. A writ is issued to each of the returning officers yeah. in every electoral division in Belize. So there are 20, 31 writs that are unlawful and illegal based on what the chief justice is. Because, because, because it says there's any proposed settlement and... The section of the, the law says that we, yeah, I, I was reading it earlier, that, yeah. <coughs> the and the, the, the argument against that is that section D deals with a proposed settlement of the matter, not with a court judgment, because the people of Belize can Because the judgment from is the final ICG and is, the propo is a proposed set that settlement. That is one argument. That is a way to, to, to solve the matter. It the, the it's kind of stretching the argument the, the, too the, the, because the, we don't have no say in there. Dicky, can I can I swing can I swing just a little because we're talk, we're just talking about what will happen on Friday, and I think Friday is an important date mm -hmm. because if a house meeting is held on Friday, my opinion and uh, I don't I want your opinion on on my view of it is that this is a PR war. It, this is not so much a legal war because the government has a way to get this done. There, there's a way to get it done. But it's a PR war. Because more so than people coming out and voting no, I think the bigger national concern is some people becoming uh, disappointed or confused and not coming out to vote at all. I think this can affect voter turnout when it does come. People be, being frustrated. The nose will but, pour out. The nose will pour but, out. But that's, that's not my question. <laughs> that's not my question. My question really is, uh, Dicky, the... In, in looking at what the, the Prime Minister has been saying, when we go to put this matter before the people of Belize, and the people look at everything that has been going on, particularly the way the political parties have been responding, the PUP seem to be gloating in, in response to one question, the, the gathering of PUPs out there laughed. And, and, and if you look at the feed underneath the live feed, the comments were, man, why are you guys laughing? It's the, serious, the, yes. Yes, a serious matter. The, the response... What you laugh I'm, I'm to just, see, you laugh... No, man, you laugh wait, to man. see that Pharaoh wait. has been faced with his own political what, for mortality. For but, the, but for we have to understand how things go, man. If you read the Bible, yes. Moses goes to this mighty man mm -hmm. and says to him, I have an instruction from the Lord or God that you are to let my people go. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? Why move yourself in front of me? You know. Eventually, he has to yield. The point, uh, the point is this. From the get-go, one, they are not to have signed the compromise without coming to the people of Belize. The compromise is a treaty that binds Belize with Guatemala. We are in a trouble over a treaty. Two, they're going to ratify it and explain to Belize what ratification of a treaty means. Everything they have done is illegal and they, they behave <coughs> like fear on a one here and nothing from the I people. Can, can I just tell you, the compromise set a date for a joint referendum simultaneous. Yes. I don't like using big words there. Guatemala and Belize may have a referendum and they're saying they so they can't do what they're doing, we know. Boy, the international community were really disappointed if Uno go say no, Guatemala don't say that. Boy, Guatemala changed for we laugh and referendum to 60% to a majority of one. Guatemala changed and said we don't want to have the referendum on the 23rd of October 2013. Guatemala do this, Guatemala that. But in Belize, you know, I hear nothing from the people of Belize. They don't even answer the official constitutional opposition of the country. So let me repeat myself by saying to you and Marlene and your visitors, the fact that this issue concerning Guatemala, which is a very important, I think of an ex Hyde calls it an existential issue, the fact that this issue has splintered into UDP that yes and PUP that no, that is a tragedy for us. So me and you and Marlene must now say to our leaders and our people, stop this kind of gamesmanship and I win one injunction but I want to win the war. I can't. And stop it and say to the people, 
the Ministry of Education, for which the Minister of Education has been sitting in that office for over 10 years, has not lifted a finger in the educational campaign and program for which the science said they will but do. Key, if you're alone, Kevin, there's a serious let's, matter let's, involved let's. here. There's a serious matter involved here. The people of Belize is being taken for fools, and you want to look for big adult people and tell them how to vote? I want oh, you know, I know want what that is issues? But that's it. Let's get in here and, and then he can finish his question. Yeah. Let me just finish the question. Yeah. My question is, when you take a box and put him in a ring, he boxes. I am in full agreement with your point okay. that it should not be a partisan political football. Stop it. Yes, yeah, stop that. But when you put people in the house, when you put politicians in the house, we've seen, I've never seen a house meeting so that terrible. has gone the way that I think and in people's head they would like to see it go. On Friday, this being a PR battle, going into the house will be nothing other than a shenanigan. Particularly when the Prime Minister has said in the press conference that according to the Attorney General, after the win in the Court of Appeal, there was an exchange between the Attorney General and the leader of the People's United Party, where apparently the leader of the People's United Party told the Attorney General if you're going to try to go to the house and fix it, whatever you want to do, I will oppose it. The party stop leader it, told me it. last night that is not what transpired. Then yeah. we're moving into he said, he said. I, I have a, another question, and um, it has to do with what will happen in the house. So what is the requirement to have the referendum act changed? Um, we've heard two schools of thought. We've heard that passing a resolution for the, re for the referendum to take place will require a majority in the House, which, which the government does control. Um, we've heard other arguments where going to the ICJ, which, which I think is a part of the substantial case, is in effect allowing the ICJ to change the boundaries, which would then change the Constitution, which then means that uh, any such uh, agreement made in the House requires a two-thirds majority. What, what is your opinion on this? In relation to which one? That the any, House any, any changes that is made in the House on Friday? What do you need? What is the requirement? The requirement to change the referendum law of Belize is a majority. Okay. However, because if in the issue that is the main issue, the matter of going to the court, so that the boundaries are believed, so that the, even the size are believed. It's not just where part of the line there, Guatemala may claim a fourth of an African country and succeed, because those things are matters which the elected representative and people are believed under the Constitution, only they can change the boundaries of this country following a procedure mm -hmm. which requires a 90 days waiting period and so on and so forth. Those are constitutional matters, and if you are, if you are saying, that section 21A, the House of Representatives can pass a resolution saying that there's a matter of national importance that requires a referendum. That, on the face of it, only need one majority, only the UDP. You know what? So, okay, to. so that's one way. But yes. That one way which is fraught with applications. That, would, that is fraught with applications to the court that that law is going to end up impacting on the Constitution, as Kevin has suggested earlier, because it involves the people going out to say, take this matter to the court, take this matter to the International Court of Justice, whose decision is final and binding. You can't appeal it, you can't change it. They have no say now if we say, from the, can I tell you, can I tell your viewers this, because I dare to talk to. Yes. The British had repeatedly offered Guatemala you can get from the Moho River down to the Sastoon. We'll give that to you. They wanted more. But that offer is indicative that the British are saying we could solve this matter by giving you a piece of land. I'm sure you saw yesterday we were joined uh, by another attorney, uh, Audra Matura, who is speaking on this issue as well. She is of the opinion that because the ICJ ruling would essentially be the proposed settlement um, for the Belize-Guatemala dispute, yeah, that that back, ruling would have to come back to the people for a referendum. What's your opinion on this? No, man. We have entered into a treaty with Guatemala and, by extension, the international community. 
that the people of Belize are being asked to just say you want to go to court or you don't want to go to court. If you go to court, the decision of the court is final and binding. We will have to abide by that decision. Not the people. There's nothing in here about subject to the decision of the people in a referendum. That referendum under 21D is thrown aside because you have superseded that by setting up a new referendum which simply asks you to go to court, yes or no. The moment the people of Belize vote to go to court, Whatever that court says is final and binding. You know, that the, the National Assembly of Belize, the elected leaders, must amend the constitution to bring it in line with whatever decision is made. They must. They so will, they on will, Friday, listen, tell us something. Can I? On, on Friday, it doesn't have to be a change to legislation. It can just be a resolution. Yes, but no. If they, if they right now, all they need to do is to meet and pass a resolution, but they still have to decide if they will wait 30 days for the Governor General's writ to come into effect. Yes. Or they want to play a real strong man and change that period to a compressed to a shorter period. Well, if we're and to use the indicators provided, the timeline given is six to eight weeks, which is well, with it, with well beyond 30 days. Yeah, but all right, this is where you come in, Marlene, and you, Channel 5, come in, and the people of our country. We have to stop the two political parties from getting to this sword fight, this jousting. Who could people further? We have to say to you, we are tired of this kind of behavior, you know. This issue is above, don't, aren't they putting up on big billboards to say that George Paris has said the national interest is above party politics? Mm -hmm. Follow it. Listen to the father of the nation. Put aside your two political party jousting and sit down and the, this is where leadership comes in. This is where statesman, I want to use statesman because it is male bias, like there must be a new word for the statesperson or whatever. This is where leadership comes in. I am hoping, I can't tell you what me and the party leader and Corey will talk about because I'm going to beach there, there. I am hoping that the people around the party leader in the opposition can come forward and make some, see, here it is, man. Yes. Oh, Judge Price, God bless you. We will see you in heaven. National interest must override party politics. Those words were said, not by no ICJ, you know, that's a dirty, dishonest thing for them to do, but that, those words are applicable. People are believe, let me talk to, to, to let, me get, let me get this out. We have to say to this politician, these politicians on the two sides, stop this. <coughs> Sit down and work out. Say we're going to have he want how we rush through now, what, six weeks, eight weeks? I must have, I want to win this, I want. Yes, you could run through thing, and then you find out later on, the court said the whole thing is well, lawful and, and, and illegal. And that's We're what bigger I, than that. That's Belize what I is want better to understand, than that. and I echo your statement, okay. and, I, and Kevin and I have discussed this quite a bit on the show as well about what we should demand uh, uh, in terms of the debate that takes place in the House of Representatives, and I think a lot of people um, share that opinion as well. But just to be clear of what the possibilities are when we go, when we see this House meeting take place on Friday, one option is that the government goes in and passes a resolution for the referendum to be held An amendment. based on national importance. The amendment of the act that you're speaking of, you're, you're talking about changing the 30-day time yes. frame. Yes, yes. We don't yeah. know for sure that that's what no, will happen, but that's one pos they possible may, they, suggestion. They may agree to wait until, until for another 30 days to expire. And yeah, I'm saying if you use the six to eight time, They could weeks. have compressed this, you know, they slipped down big time, you know. The so injunction the is against the current writ, the writ that is unlawful and illegal in the view of Amon and mm -hmm. Anthony Sylvester, Karim Musa, Dean Molina and Eliana Swift were put in awesome among legal work on this. The writ that they have pointed out to the Chief Justice of this nation, that writ is unlawful and illegal. So if they a new writ is issued yes, under a new writ, there's no injunction. A, there's no injunction against the government for issuing a new writ. So if a new writ is issued under 21A, a resolution passed in the House with the majority, which the government possesses, then the referendum can essentially proceed? Basically, yes. Although, you know, I'm sorry, we, you know, five years of training has, has um, infested my way of thinking. I didn't want to be a liar, I wanted to be a writer. Mm. But you just stumble into the law class instead of the. They <laughs> say in the. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, I like that, Marlene. I'll tell my son that. 
Now, in the breast of most liars is the wreckage of a poet. Um, so you were saying that if the resolution <laughs> is passed, <laughs> like <that> came. <laughs> if the resolution is passed, no, I was saying, and that. the referendum proceeds because you're saying that it's legally possible. If a new writ is issued, the referendum can yes, be held. Yes, yes. In the eyes of the government, that but, would be the cure. But, but as but, but, Kevin but, but, is but. trying to suggest to you, because you are going under to one A that the yes. National Assembly must pass a resolution yeah. saying that there is a matter of national importance and that the specific referendum required in the special agreement section, whatever it is and so, calls for a referendum. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, this House approves that a resolution be held in that matter. But, uh, they well, might not have to touch a 30 days thing. They could wait on 30 days to cool off and whatnot. I, I, I wanted to go back okay. um, further because, Time to run out now. because you're no, saying... No, I'm oh, just trying oh, to see oh, what the possibilities you're, are. You're saying that All Friday right, they can you, pass new rates. They could do it in one. But, but the yeah. substance of the claim... That's right is that the special agreement that Which there was no authority the for the foreign minister to enter into this agreement was somehow there's a, there's a problem with it. So as you were talking about fruits of the poison tree, everything that flows, the writs flow from the special agreement in a sense. And so how can you then have, unless you would abandon the special agreement, and asking for the writ. They can't, it's a apart. treaty, they can't, yeah. it's a treaty, it's a binding treaty. And we can't change the special agreement because and that has to be done in agreement can, with can Guatemala. Agree. We have put ourselves in a pickle, now we need to unite so, as a nation. So I guess if I understand what you're saying is that even if a writ is, is issued yeah. under 2-1-A, which they have the authority to do under the Referendum Act, under. the government of the country does, yeah. um, later on in the future, the case is successful on half of the claimants that the special agreement was in any way illegal or didn't follow due process, then that referendum it's void. It's, it's is invalid. void. There's that possibility. Yes. But there's also another issue here. Yes. The case before the Supreme Court will take, I mean, you, you guys give me an average. No, the Chief it, Justice will hear this matter expeditiously. So. Okay. Okay, and if they, if they decide to take it to the Court of Appeal or yeah, the CCJ. CCJ. Because the point is that a yes vote at a referendum based on a special agreement triggers another process, which is within one month, you'll be at the ICJ. You have Not to then, yeah. You have to go through that so treaty. We'll start, the process will start. Well, it, yeah, that's years. why it triggers. It will be, yeah, it'll be five to seven years. Yeah, but but within the, the first process, month, the agents start. get together and they start to decide on their schedule, Guatemala. agree on their schedule um, with, with the court itself. So my question is, and, and I know we're moving into hypothetical, which is always dangerous, but I just want to be sure that I have it clear. Um, if a writ, if a new writ is issued on the 2-1-A, the House passes the resolution for this referendum to be held under national importance, goes to the people, eight weeks time, um, they get a yes vote, let's say the matter is still progressing through the Court of Appeal, maybe even at the CCJ, and the ICJ process is initiated before there's a final resolution. And the CCJ says it's all illegal, it breaks. Even at the ICJ? Break. You can't continue okay. with an That's what I want to be clear on. No, the House of Representatives, because parliamentary democracy is a dressed up term for cabinet government, for prime ministerial government, which is what I was taught in constitutional law in third year. All that that the British is dressed up to the prime minister has all it. A prime minister under the British system is more powerful than the president of the United States. You know. He can't appoint this one, he can't appoint, he can't recommend, and the Senate will appoint. Can you imagine that? In our system, Prime Minister decides who the judge, who the commissioner of police, who the head of the army, who the head of the public service, who the head of integrity, everything, everything. He decides which law goes to the house, which resolution will pass, borrow money, no care who broke the country, but everything. But the judge is not appointed by Judicial so Legal Services Commission. Well, again, but it's legally, it's recommendation, and what? then it's also in consultation, too. Yeah, a judge, a judge you think in particular. Up, do you, you know, I'm saying to you, the Prime Minister under the Constitution, I believe, in our... Because a lot of sway. The prime, no, he has too much power. That is not for small countries like us in Britain, where they have a whole 
layer and tear of checks and balances. Look what is happening to Theresa May. She is in the biggest trouble ever, Prime Minister, ever, ever, because that uh, she just wants stubborn and go ahead. Can we say this, the three of us? Uh, Marlene has paralegal from her years of experience alone. You have an honorary paralegal. Both Kevin and I <laughs> bestow this <laughs> here <laughs> with and here under. <laughs> here with the report. We, we, you know what? We owe it to the people. There will be no referendum tomorrow. It is not true that the leader of the opposition and the opposition party in this country does not want a referendum. They want a referendum. In fact, no, they want it worse because they can point out if they are still in favor of no and point out to the people of Belize, look at the lessons we just learned. The government can't even write out one writ to make it illegal and lawful. Professor, I can't pronounce Vassiani. Professor Stephen Vassiani, his last paragraph, Kevin. We need to talk to our people. A professor from our, a professor in our university, the University of Belize, which you where you and I will train and then mold the mind. Right? It took me a long while to, to rise above <laughs> the living. Listen, he has said, Belize is banking its arguments on history, on historical matters, yes. which spans a period of 300 years. Belizeans, you need to do the research and go and look at everything in all the archives in Britain, in Spain, everywhere, because you can get a surprise when you go to court. That is in addition to what Mr. Gandhi had said from March 2009. We need, we need, we need right now. That is why I'm coming like, you know, repeating myself. We need right now to halt this business of what is going on. The leader of the opposition, let me be, I have been his critic and he has chastised me. Let me say this. The leader of the opposition in this country, who don't want to be no orator, who don't want to use no big adjectives and no man of words and not of deeds, he don't want to be like that. He has publicly said, I could get a credit, I am in favor of yes. Yes, I believe that we have a good case. Let's go to the ICJ. I want to go there. And he's man enough, man, publicly in this country to have come and said, I, on behalf of my party, we are saying no unless you straighten up some matters. We need to ask the leaders of the two political parties to sit down and be leaders for the country and say that we are not going through all of this because every time you turn to court, you don't know what will happen. That is it. So we need to say, take the party politics out of the Guatemalan issue. Okay. You represent we the people. We the people don't want to get out there. I am told I want to go and see it. I'm told that most had gone off, that then they bring money into the business. They want election, buy votes, give t shot The way they did the, the um, Petrocari money, $50 to go to Belmopan, you get one food and one drink, you get t-shirt, all kind. We don't want that. This thing is Dickie, too my big. My final question. But you agree with me, Kevin? Yeah, I, I see, I see, right, I, I see, I can see where you're going. Thing. And that is where I want to end in terms of, is it utopia, an idealist situation you're calling for? Because... The timing of when the next general election, if, 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 if I'm strategizing, mm -hmm. I lost two in a row. I was hoping that this would have given me some momentum to bring me into a fourth term. It would confirm certain things. It would be a, 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 a nail in the coffin of my political opponent. And then I had this withdrawal in terms of my strategy. I now have to press. The general elections are right here next year. No, a week, in, can, a week how, in politics is a how, very long time. How, that is a year off. Why would I take my foot off the gas at this point in time and make it less political when I've suffered a huge political embarrassment? Because they have won. And I've also, yeah, why, would I, why would I abandon something that's given me credibility as the opposition? to not make it political when this is my, my largest political win in 15 years? No, man. The largest political win is the Belize City Council resisting the money and voting out the government. 
But you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I take what you find that they're going. But listen, the opposition party has won. They won one, they won the next one. Two in a row within days of each other, the Supreme Court of Belize and the highest resident court of three judges, the president of the court, Honorable Justice Sosa, Justice Awich, and Justice Hafez Bertram have said, you can't even come to the court. Oh, you hold it, you hold it, come here. So listen, if, it's, if it, they, 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 the opposition has won a victory, they've won two victories. This is no longer an issue to be chalking up winning. The, the people of Belize, at, at the, the cost, cost of at the cost of educating the people of Belize that when you go to court, you can lose. <laughs> it's frightening. The same people who are telling us, listen, my boy, you got ironclad, you got waterproof, you got airtight. I did tell you vote yes because you want to win everything and Guatemala want to lose everything. And every time they go to court, they lose. They have no credibility to tell us that. In fact, we don't want you to say nothing. We want an education project managed and run by a bipartisan, non-partisan committee of both parties, the churches, the labor union, the young people, the artists, and so. The yes so and the no's. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Well, mm -hmm. as we've said many times, I think over the past week, this, this situation seems to be rapidly changing as the days go by. One thing we know for sure is that uh, there won't be a referendum tomorrow, and we will see what the next step from the government will be at this time. Dickie, thank you for coming in and attempting to break down all the legal aspects with, of what is taking place. With Kevin's interruption, with Kevin's interjection. Well, interjection. Expect, interjection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to go ahead and take a break, and we'll be back in a few. Stay tuned.